And so that concludes this section of the course on the sun, stars, and galaxies. And what better place than to end it than out front of the beautiful 74-inch telescope behind us, Paul? That's right. As we've talked about a lot in this course, one of the major clues that allowed us to figure out what the sun is made out of, how it works, and all the other stars was spectroscopy. And that's what this telescope did. It uh, was damaged in the bushfires, much like the one we started the whole course at. So while it looks nice on the outside, the inside is a burnt wreck. Yeah. But for many decades, this was the largest telescope in the Southern Hemisphere, and it was used primarily to get spectra of all sorts of different stars. And much of what we've told you about all the different spectral types of stars and the evolution of stars was worked out using data from this telescope. Now, we've covered a lot in this course, spectroscopy, nuclear physics, the life cycle of stars. Paul, what do you think is the most important or impressive message from this section of the course? I mean, to me, I think the whole story of how we went from us looking at the sun and wondering about it to actually at this level where we're capable of doing a detailed nuclear calculation of what's happening in the center, despite the fact that no human has ever been within hundreds of thousands of kilometers of the sun, that is one of the great human achievements. I mean, up there with you, building the great wonders of the world, writing symphonies, poems. Um, when we think about the cultural achievements of humanity, I think understanding the sun and stars has to be up there with other great achievements. And, you know, I agree, because if you now then take that achievement of the sun and stars, well, now we get to apply it to the entire universe. We now can understand the history and evolution of where an atom 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang has evolved and gone through this repeated process to end up in our bodies. I, mean, I think that's just remarkable. The question of how did we get here and why is as old as humanity. And yet now we're starting to understand how those building blocks came to be. That's right. Now, of course, we fully understand everything in the universe. It's about sun and stars, don't we? Yeah, there's nothing else to understand. All the mysteries are solved, right, Paul? Uh, well, actually, I don't wish it was true because we'd be out of work if it was true. Um, <laughs> So what do you think are the greatest unsolved things? What don't we know about the sun and stars? Look, I'm a bit biased here, but understanding a lot about the deaths of stars. Now, again, this keeps me employed, you're right. If we understood everything, I wouldn't be here. But there's so many different things to learn about how a star dies. In fact, they're so varied, it's kind of like understanding why a human dies. There's so many different reasons. And it's also so hard to predict and understand what starts this process. And yet it's such a vital part of this. What about you? The birth of stars is the other thing we don't understand very well. It's uh, you know, the middle, middle age of a star is, I think, fairly well understood. I mean, there are still a few things we don't quite master to high precision, but it's the birth and the death are the real places where there's a lot of ignorance at the moment. Now, if you want to understand a bit more about the deaths of stars, is that you cover this in greater detail, right? That's right. So in Astro 1001, our other first year astronomy course, we have a whole module on the violent universe, which focuses on the things that's in space that will kill you, you know, black holes, supernovae, novae, all these sorts of things. So if you want much more information about the deaths of stars, try that course out. Now, this concludes our exploration of the sun, stars and galaxies and onward to the solar system.